McDonald F2H Banshee, Moonbats, and Phantoms. The McDonald Aircraft Corporation was founded in St. Louis, Missouri in 1939 by James McDonald. By 1940, as America geared up for war, the company was busy building sub-assemblies for other aircraft manufacturers. But McDonnell engineers also came up with a design for a heavy long-range fighter with twin piston engines for submission to the U.S. Army Air Corps. After some design iterations, the Army was interested enough to order two prototypes. Work on the aircraft was protracted with the Army nearly canceling the effort, but the first XP-67 called the Bat or Moonbat finally took to the air on January 6, 1944. Subscribe to our channel and get notification when we release new episodes. The Moonbat, as its name hints, was an unusual aircraft featuring what would later be called blended wing body features, the wing merging smoothly into the fuselage to maximize lift, giving it something of a 1940s retro sci-fi appearance. The engine was fitted into a streamlined nacelle in each wing. The Continental engines drove four bladed propellers but didn't deliver rated power and proved temperamental, often forcing test flights, including the first, to be cut short. The program was canceled in October, the second prototype never being completed. However, U.S. Navy aviation officials were impressed with the audacious BAT project and invited McDonald to cooperate in developing a shipboard jet fighter using an engine from the turbojets under development by Westinghouse Electric Corporation. McDonnell engineers evaluated a number of engine combinations, and the final design used two 19-inch engines, which were found to be the lightest and simplest configuration. The FH-1 Phantom was a neat, sporty, single-seat aircraft of conventional design, built mostly of aircraft aluminum. It featured low-mounted straight wings, with an engine in each wing route, a tail assembly with the tailplane mounted above the fuselage, a raised cockpit, and tricycle landing gear. The wing folded straight up outboard of the main landing gear and featured ailerons and split flaps with a solid panel spoiler type air brake on top of the wing outboard of the wing fold. The wing and tailplane had noticeable dihedral. Armament consisted of four 50 caliber M2 Browning machine guns on the top side of the nose with 325 rounds of ammunition per gun. There were also stub launchers under the wings for eight 5-inch rockets, though these were rarely carried. A conformal belly fuel tank with a capacity of 295 U.S. gallons could be attached. Only 60 FH-1s were actually built since the end of the war and did any urgency for obtaining jet fighters, and though the Phantom was apparently a very pleasant aircraft to fly, it was also underpowered, not much faster than the best piston fighters. It also had much less range. Scream of the Banshee The Banshee was a development of the FH Phantom, and planning started before the Phantom entered production. McDonnell engineers intended the aircraft to be a modified Phantom that shared many parts with the earlier aircraft, but it soon became clear that the need for heavier armament, greater internal fuel capacity, and other improvements would make the idea unfeasible. The new aircraft would use much larger and more powerful engines, a pair of newly developed turbojets, nearly doubling the total thrust from 3,200 to 6,000 pounds force. But since the larger engine still had to fit within the wing routes, this required a larger and thicker wing. The more powerful engines used more fuel, so the fuselage had to be enlarged and strengthened to increase the fuel capacity. The Navy was replacing the obsolete World War II 0.50-inch machine guns with 0.79-inch cannons, four of which were mounted under the nose where pilots would not be blinded by muzzle flash when firing at night a problem with the Phantom. Cannons affording 220 rounds for the upper set and 250 rounds for the lower set were useful in strafing ground targets as well. This marked a U.S. Navy shift away from its commitment to the 50 caliber Browning heavy machine gun as standard armament for a fighting platform. The Banshee incorporated an ejection seat, which the Phantom lacked, and a large number of improvements to other aircraft systems. The cockpit was pressurized and air-conditioned, and the flaps, landing gear, folding wings, canopy, and air brakes were electrically rather than pneumatically operated. The front of the windscreen was bulletproof glass that was electrically heated to prevent frost. The airplane's official nickname derived from the fact that its engines scream like a banshee, a female spirit in Irish folklore who heralds the death of a family member 
usually by wailing, shrieking, or keening. Its pilots, however, affectionately called it the banjo. Pilots generally liked the plane, since it had good performance by the standards of the time, and handled well while being very sturdy and reliable. It had fair range for a jet, and pilots learned to extend the range by cruising on a single engine. The initial flight of the XF-2D1 was from St. Louis on January 11, 1947. Trials proved satisfactory, and so the Navy ordered 56 production machines as the F-2H1 Banshee in May 1947, with the first rolled out in August 1948. The F-2H2's appearance was generally much the same as that of the F-2H1, but the F-2H2 was stretched by 14 inches to increase fuel capacity by 177 U.S. gallons. A tank with a capacity of 200 gallons was attached to each wingtip. The tip tanks were fixed and could not be dropped. They could be removed by the deck crew. Variants The F-2H2 was the basis for three sub-variants. The F-2H2B had strengthened wings and an additional pylon adjacent to the intake on the port side to allow it to carry a 1,650-pound Mark VII nuclear bomb or a 3,230-pound Mark VIII nuclear bomb. One cannon was removed to provide room for the electronics needed to arm the weapon. 25 F-2H-2Bs were built. The F-2H-2N was the U.S. Navy's first carrier-based jet night fighter, though only 14 would be built. Its first flight was on February 3, 1950. It had a 2-foot, 10-inch longer nose, housing a Sperry Corporation radar, which required the cannons to be moved back to make room. The F-2H-2P photo reconnaissance version had six cameras and a 2-foot, 5-inch longer nose and was the Navy's first jet-powered carrier-based reconnaissance aircraft. It first flew on October 12, 1950, and 90 were built. The pilot could rotate the cameras in both vertical and horizontal planes, and the aircraft could carry a pair of underwing pods, each containing 20 flash cartridges for night photography. The camera bay was electrically heated. The F-2H-2P was a valuable photo reconnaissance asset due to its long range for a jet aircraft, high ceiling of 48,500 feet, and speed that made interception difficult even by other jets. As a result, the F-2H-2P supplied roughly 40% of the U.S. 5th Air Force's daytime reconnaissance needs. Most F-2H-2s flew in overall sea blue colors, though sometimes colorful trim was added, particularly to the wingtip tanks. The F-2H-3 was an all-weather fighter with a large diameter Westinghouse radar fitted in an 8-foot longer fuselage, which also increased its internal fuel load by over 50%, to 1,102 U.S. gallons. This allowed the detachable wingtip fuel tanks to be reduced to 170 gallons each, and due to the increased internal capacity, these were now seldom needed. The cannons were moved back, away from the nose, to accommodate the larger diameter radar, while allowing for an increased ammunition capacity. The weapons load was increased to 3,000 pounds, and AIM-9 Sidewinder air-to-air -air missiles would be cleared for use. The F-2H-3 also added provisions for aerial refueling, consisting of an as-needed bolt-on in-flight refueling probe that replaced the upper port cannon. Some 250 were built, with the first flight made on March 29, 1952. The final variant produced was the F-2H-4. It had a Hughes radar and slightly more powerful Westinghouse 3,600-pound engines that increased the service ceiling to 56,000 feet. The F-2H-2 was in fleet service when the Korean War broke out in June 1950, but it would generally be a second-string player in the conflict, the Grumman F-6F Panther taking more of the honors. Combat in Korea The limited use of the Banshee in Korea was evidence of the war there being regarded as a sideshow to the global confrontation with the Soviet Union. Banshee deliveries to the Atlantic and Mediterranean took priority over operations in the Korean theater. The F-2H-2s fought mostly in the strike role, the type being a stable bombing platform and rugged. During the opening weeks of the war, the North Korean Air Force was almost completely annihilated by United Nations Command UNC fighter units. Later, North Korea and its allies, unable to operate from airfields near combat zones in South Korea, were forced to use bases in China. 
As a result of their air superiority throughout most of 1950, UNC squadrons could carry out ground attack missions instead, especially close air support and interdiction of North Korean Army supply lines. The Banshee, like most naval jets of its generation, had a serious handicap. Naval air services, including the U.S. Navy, had resisted faster swept-wing designs, fearing that poor low-speed flight characteristics made them unsafe to operate from aircraft carriers. The Banshee thus was almost 100 miles per hour slower than the latest land-based fighters. Its obsolescence was reinforced by introduction of the Mikoyan Gurevich MiG-15 in November 1950. Most UNC air combat missions, such as patrols over MiG Alley, were undertaken by North American F-86 Sabres of the U.S. Far East Air Force. The Banshee operated most of the war beyond the range of enemy fighters and scored no victories, while three F-2H-2s were lost to anti-aircraft gunfire. The F-2H-2P flew reconnaissance missions during the Korean War, primarily with the U.S. Marine Corps. At that time of the war, surface-to-air missiles had not yet been deployed and few enemy aircraft had radar, while anti-aircraft guns were ineffective against fast, high-altitude targets. Air defense was still largely visual, and so a lone high-flying F-2H-2P was very hard for ground forces to shoot down. In time, the U.S. Navy and Marine Corps began adopting higher-performance swept-wing products to keep pace with the enemy. The Banshee remained in the active U.S. Navy and Marine Corps inventory up until 1959, and reserve units gave up the aircraft in 1961. Service in Canada In 1951, the Royal Canadian Navy drafted a $40 million deal for 60 new Banshees to replace obsolete Hawker Sea Furies. Unfortunately, due to fiscal wrangling in the Parliament of Canada, the purchase was not approved until after Banshee production had ended in 1953. Canada acquired 39 second-hand U.S. Navy F-2H-3s for $25 million, which were delivered from 1955 to 1958. Although initially well-liked by its Canadian pilots for its flying qualities, the Banshee began to suffer from problems. The Royal Canadian Navy would eventually lose 12 of its original 39 Banshees to accidents, a loss rate of 30.8%. One Banshee and its pilot were lost after an in-flight failure of the folding wing mechanism, and another Banshee suffered a brake failure and rolled off the carrier's deck into the ocean, drowning its pilot. Banshee utilization fell as the Navy shifted to anti-submarine warfare. The Canadian military was also under pressure to reduce its budget, and the obsolescent Banshees were expensive to maintain as their age and punishing carrier service and the harsh North Atlantic were taking their toll. Having been the only jet-powered carrier-based fighters deployed by the Royal Canadian Navy, the last examples were retired without replacement in September 1962. Surviving Banshees are on display in private collections and at several naval air stations and Marine Corps air stations in the United States and Canada. If you like these types of videos, subscribe to our channel and get notification when we release new episodes. For more interesting military history content, check out our video library.